Okay, we have an interesting situation here. Uh, we have a wall that we want to remove uh, so we can extend the kitchen out, make it bigger, uh, extend it into the dining room area, formal dining room area. And um, we have some plumbing upstairs that concerns us. Uh, it's over, uh, it's close to this wall. We have a tub that's right around here above it and the vanity right around here. So we want to see do these uh, do these uh, um, drain lines, do they drop down in this wall or do they drop down on one of the exterior walls or one of the uh, other interior walls? So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a section of the wall right now and uh, see what's inside. Okay, so it looks like we have a shear panel here, a shear paneling uh, that lets us know this is uh, most likely a bearing wall. Uh, now we're going to remove the shear paneling, see what's behind it. Okay, so um, every issue we could have that's uh, a problem is in this wall. <laughs> we have drain lines, we have supply lines, and we have bolts in the bottom plate, which means that this is a bearing wall. Uh, the floor joists that we suspected were going this way are actually probably going this way. So we're going to have to do a beam above this wall, posts, um, and then relocate these drain lines. Um, probably do an exterior wall, this exterior wall here, and drop it down. All possible, but uh, just means a little more work. All right, so here we are in our uh, kitchen remodel. We have a shear wall that we just removed. So once you remove a shear wall, shear wall is meant to uh, stop the house from tipping one side or the other, right? You have your load bearing walls, which keeps loads from falling in. And then you have your shear strength on your walls, which prevent the walls from doing that. That's what we had here. It was not a load bearing wall, but it was a shear wall. Uh, so we took it out. We had to dig, you can see the concrete here. We have it all cut up. We had to trench it out and put in a grade beam. So that is, uh, you know, metal rebar and concrete. And then we had to embed some brackets for uh, these big eight by eight. Um, uh, steel columns. So this is an 8x8 steel columns that's welded to an 8x8 steel beam that goes across. Then you attach it to the floor, the subfloor of the upper floor there. Now that the house basically can't tilt back and forth. Well, this side, this part of the house. So, so basically this was the wall that separated the, uh, the dining room from the kitchen. So the kitchen originally ended right here. So as you can see, we're gaining a, a lot of space for the kitchen here. And we're gonna have this real enormous island that goes in this kitchen. Uh, cabinetry is gonna come all the way across these two walls. And then we have some barn door sliders that are gonna open up here to go into the next room. And then we have another wall of cabinets on this side here. I just wanted to show you guys the progress here and go over some of the details. Okay, so again, we have to make two chases to, uh, to fit these. These are eight by eight beams, so they're huge, you know? Normal walls are four by four. These are four by four exterior walls. So we, had to, we have to make a chase. So what we did is we have this beam, or this column is gonna be sticking outside of the house and we're gonna wrap it with stucco. And then on the other side, let me show you. On the other side, the same thing. We have uh, we have these four by four walls here. This actually sticks out into the into the room behind us here, 
another four inches. And so we're gonna have to build a chase for that and we'll, there's actually some soffits in here, uh, some pop outs um, because there's a stairwell that's, that's kind of angled on the other side. It's hard to see because we've got all the plastic up, but, uh, but we're gonna make another little, another little chase and then we're gonna connect the two and it'll be really hard to see once it's all done. But we got it done. <laughs> Also part of this remodel was making a bigger uh, door uh, to the backyard. So this had, uh, originally it had an eight foot slider. We're making it now a 12 foot slider. So this is a double French slider door. As you can see, it's got two doors that slide out to the sides here. Changing the, the style of the house, going with a black uh, framed door versus a white framed door. You can see we had to put in a giant header there. This is called the Paralam beam or a PSL beam. It's a lot stronger than a regular wood beam because it's made up of layers of wood that are all glued together as you can see and so uh, actually it tests stronger than a regular wood beam but it's still a massive beam you can see it barely fits in there so that's all to get this big space here this nice open space now once the kitchen's done you're gonna have this 12 foot wall of windows here that it will see out to the backyard into the pool area so again this was where this beam is this is where our where our old shear wall was the wall that that separated the uh, the dining room from the kitchen now that we have that blown out we cut in we already cemented in um, because we did all the new drain lines and supply lines that went in this channel here that we created also we made this channel for the island we're going to have some um, electrical on the island as well again switching to the black frame and you can see how much space we added to the kitchen here also, the dining room had these two windows, so we needed to fill them in. This is, uh, creates the back wall where the, uh, where the range is going to go, and a custom-built hood. And to make things a little more complex, we have actually some drain lines that are coming from a toilet and a vanity sink upstairs that were in the way of this beam. We had to make a little gap above the beam as you can see we're starting to run our uh, supply lines over it and we have some drain lines that are going to need to go over it as well um, we had this big cast iron drain that was in this wall uh, that was right here there's a wall that stuck out uh, right about there and so we had to relocate that to the back side of this wall here um, as you can see that's going now through the living room floor. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to add some, uh, another little false wall right here to hide all that. And then you won't be able to see it once it's all done. But right now it looks like a real tough thing. <laughs> Old dining room, which is now part of the kitchen. And we have, we have this uh, pass through here that will go into the, um, the formal living room. And this will have some barn doors on the face of it. So it'll look pretty cool. Um, then we have a wall of cabinets here. We got an uh, inline coffee maker that's going to go in here. I'm excited for that. So we have this uh, TV area here uh, that is, um, we're going to center it between, it's not going to be over the fireplace anymore. It's going to be kind of halfway over the fireplace, kind of in the middle of this whole wall here. So kind of hard to see what it's going to be when it's right now. But, and then we got some uh, more black framed windows. This is that uh, the new slider, and then we have the rest of the, the rest of the project. As you can see, this kitchen is going to be just enormous, and this island here starts from here and goes all the way to this other end of this red line here. You can kind of get a feel for how how extensive this project is to take out this wall. Um, this is the exterior of the house. We had to rip out a part of the concrete pad here. Uh, this beam actually, or the grade beam actually, that's the, the footing that goes in the floor, actually came all the way out to here, underneath this uh, this concrete here. Um, then you can see we got to build this platform here. This is to make our chase. Uh, and then we had to embed this, this column here. And it actually goes right up through uh, they have like a gazebo up here and it went right up through that and so all that's going to have to be patched in too and so we're going to have to make a chase around this and then stucco it in. Just goes to show you that if you really want something done like a, a certain wall taken out of your house there is a way to do it. Uh, you just might have to um, make some sacrifices.
Hi, I'm Jay with Plastic Kitchen Etc. and welcome to our latest kitchen remodel. I am very happy about this one. Very excited to show you guys this one. This is one of my absolute favorite designs that we've done. A client came up with a really cool concept, showed me the photos, and I'm like, yes, I want to do this kitchen. I cannot wait to do this kitchen. Started off with a removing a, a sheer wall, elongate the space, you know, create a, a, a kitchen that included the formal dining room into the kitchen space. This used to be the dining room where I'm standing now. And uh, over here is where the wall was, and this is where the kitchen was before. So of course we almost doubled the size, or possibly even doubled the size of the kitchen. Um, we moved the range and the hood to the back wall, did this stunning custom copper hood, four foot stove. There's a double oven on there as well. We got a built-in microwave on the base cabinet. We got a dishwasher with panels on them. We got the fridge with, with custom panels beverage center and, uh, and a built-in coffee maker. I mean, this, this kitchen is stunning. Has all the bells and whistles, tricked out everything. We have a 10 foot ceiling, so the cabinets go all the way to the ceiling. We got stacked cabinets at the top. We got extra seasonal storage up there. We have white marble looking uh, countertops. And this actually goes into a uh, waterfall edge. We waterfall both sides of the island and also this perimeter uh, countertop here. We have a, another built-in wet bar area that we did accented uh, uh, wood, and we did that same accented wood on the island. The cabinets around are, uh, are all black matte finish, and then we have some barn doors that go into the uh, formal living room that uh, we also stain that same uh, color as the cabinets, it's called toffee. So we wanted uh, seating in the island. This is our one of the longest islands I've ever done, possibly even the longest island I've ever done. I'm gonna actually take out my tape measure and measure exactly how long it is. So it is 13 and a half feet. Taller than a basketball hoop by about uh, three and a half feet. Has room for seating and storage. So we have some big banks of drawers on this side. Again, great for pots, pans, all that good stuff. We want it to be grandiose, but we also needed the walkways on both sides. We were tight on the walkways once uh, we had the design done. So we ended up with a 44 inch space on this side and a 41 inch space on this side. We have a really nice space in between the island and the, uh, and the, the range. This is 50 inches. So 50 inches is a really nice space. Again, you have a nice walkway through the barn doors into the, the living room. Uh, sink stayed in the same place. We just replaced the window. Actually, I think the sink couldn't stay in the same place. Uh, it was over there. So that was moved down. We closed in a window that was there, put in a new window here. We had two windows on each side of the dining room. Both got closed in. And then uh, we did this huge uh, slider door in the back here. The quartz is uh, by Arizona Tile. The uh, color is called Calicutta Miranda. It's a white with some pretty gray veins going through it. Uh, you know, light, dark gray veins going through it. Not a lot of gold in there, like uh, like some calicutas are. Uh, so it's, you know, kind of meant to be like a, uh, more like a Carrera. Than we did a mitered edge here, of course, so your joint for the countertop is right here. It's practically invisible. Um, and then we have returned it on the sides here, and then that butts into the toffee um, um, wood accent. We have seating here for uh, four comfortably. Right now the chairs are set up for four, uh, but you can easily have six and still be comfortable. We're going with pendants over the island and they track the whole length of the island and we stepped the pendants. So we have the two end ones a lower and the two middle ones a little bit higher. And uh, just to give it a little more, more style. We have black hardware uh, plumbing fixtures with uh, gold accents. We did black handles on the on the drawers on the, on the island cabinets, matching brushed gold around the perimeter cabinets on all the black cabinets. So everything, every little detail was thought about. The result is just a really stunning kitchen. Okay, starting on the farthest end of the kitchen, we have our wet bar. We have a black Kohler quartz sink with a matte black faucet. Our faucets are a little bit smaller than your normal kitchen faucet. 
which you're probably about this tall. It's got this gold accent on there on the handle. We did a toffee color uh, stain on this whole cabinet insert here. Now this is floating shelf. I mean, we built this custom. So what we did is we ordered just the parts and pieces to this. Most of our cabinets come like furniture, you know, in a box and they're totally put together. Well, for the most part, they're missing the toe kicks, they're missing the crowns. Obviously you gotta put in all the fillers and all that good stuff. But for the most part, the, the main part of a box is, is complete. Uh, this one right here, no such thing. <laughs> we had to build it all from scratch. So we started off with some finished end panels on the side, finished panel on the back, added in some floating shelves. I mean, the whole thing is custom. It just turned out so killer. We actually ran some whips. We ran that in these different locations here so we could run these little strip lights underneath that backlights the, the cabinet, I mean, backlights the shelves. I mean, this thing just turned out really, really cool. We got a beverage center here, half wine, half beverages, and then we have our sink base over here, more drawers over there, and then of course we have our custom uh, built-in coffee maker by the third door, which is really, really cool. And let me show you how to brew a cup of coffee. Yeah, what's nice about a uh, shelf like this, if you're designing for your kitchen, you want to think about what you're going to put in there, right? So you have different heights that this could be in between each shelf. Normally we go somewhere between like 14 and 16 inches. 15 is pretty standard, uh, but it really is up to you. Except the bottom one. The bottom one you want to stay at least 18 inches off the countertop. That's a normal bottom, 18 to 20 inches. That's a standard side or standard height off the countertop for your, either your uh, upper cabinets or uh, any shelf. So this was not a wet bar before, so we had to run drain lines here. We had lots of issues on this job with the drain lines. Uh, also with the shear wall, we had lots of issues, but we got through it. You know, the plumbing on the upstairs uh, just was in the way. It was coming through that shear wall. I mean, it was it was a nightmare, but we got, we got past it. <laughs> and here we are. So we got a drain line in here and supply lines in here. Supply lines are not as hard to figure out as drain lines. Drain lines are always harder to figure out. So we left the, uh, the pantry right here. We did some custom shelves in here um, and then stained them to match the, uh, the top of the cover. All right, so past the bar, we have the cabinet that we put the uh, coffee maker in and it says appliances rinsing right now. So it's self-clean, that's really cool. Uh, we have just normal cabinets above it, extra storage, and then seasonal storage above that. We have a pantry with rollouts in here. Which this is also a fridge freezer combo. This is your normal uh, gigantic fridge and freezer combo. So this is Thermador um, side by side, what they call them. So this is all fridge, this is all freezer. And then we did uh, custom handles on the front of them. Door handles match the uh, drawer handles here. They're just uh, appliance handles, so they're a lot bigger. You need to have venting for the coffee maker. So we designed this open cabin here so we could hide venting on the side. You know, so now we have like a little display shelf above it. You know, it has a dual purpose of having venting for the coffee maker. Coffee maker needed a drain line, by the way, supply lines and venting. It was a very finicky appliance to, um, to you know, engineer the insulation. And that's what ends this side of the kitchen. Actually, the wall was like originally right here. So you can, you can see, this was the original kitchen, and we've added so much extra space. So we had this uh, pass-through 
to the formal living room, which we wanted to keep. You know, we didn't want to just fill it in and make this like an alcove kitchen. We wanted to keep it open, right? So you got entrance from the other end of the kitchen, from the backyard, and then also this entrance right here. What we had to do though, is we had to fur out this wall, basically build out this wall a lot farther than what it was before. It was only 14 inches before. So we had to build it out here. Uh, we had to make it a little bit wider and then create our own opening for these barn doors. So these are some really cool custom barn doors. They came to us unfinished and then we stained them to match the uh, cabinetry and they just, our finisher is amazing. I mean, they look almost identical to the cabinetry. All right, and these open up. Uh, that gives you access to the formal living room and they actually have it set up right now as more of an extension of the kitchen, more entertaining type of space. Along the back wall, uh, we have, again, upper cabinets all the way to the ceiling, 10 foot ceilings. We have a microwave here. And these are, this is a drawer style microwave and I believe that uh, you press the button to open it. Cool as that. Put your thing in there. It's got the buttons here, shows you what you got, you know, cook popcorn or whatnot. Press the button to close it. <laughs> a lot of really cool bells and whistles uh, uh, on this build. Same Calicetta Miranda countertops, and then we ran them up to the ceiling as well around this gigantic four foot copper hood. Um, not copper, it is a brass hood. Totally custom, uh, corners bent. Again, the whole thing's custom. The insulation is custom. Uh, the patina on it, this is patina, um, makes it look aged. You know, that, that took uh, some time to do that. But we finally got it all done, got it installed. We got a matte black pop filler over the stove as well. Then we put some uh, wall sconces in. We definitely have enough uh, cabinet space in this kitchen so we could embellish the, uh, the aesthetics of it a little bit. You know, and having this gap with the light really, I mean, you can see it makes it look really stunning. We have a light rail on the bottom of the cabinets that hides the, all the lighting fixtures. We have a spice drawer on this side, and uh, what do we have on the other side? That's a big spice drawer too. And then on this side we have our cook sheet cabinets. So this has two dividers in it, and then all the cook sheets. So on the sink side, we designed in some um, uh, trash and recycle uh, pullout in this cabinet next to the sink. I like it centrally located, you know, I like it, like you got the range right here and you got the island right here, so if you're prepping, you got the sink right here for prepping nice trash and, um, and recycle next to it, it's really nice. And then we have this cabinet over here, which probably has some rollouts in it, yes it does. So again, this with rollouts are made for a little bit taller items versus like the drawers, you get a couple, uh, like an extra inch and a half space. Okay. And next to the sink, we have a dishwasher. This is actually a custom panel. Uh, you know, door panel, so it looks like it's cabinetry, but it's actually the dishwasher. That's really cool. And then, of course, we have the floating shelves. Um, like I was talking about before, 18 inches from the bottom, typically where you want to set your first one. And then in between there, you know, anywhere from 13 to 16 inches, 14, 15 is, is kind of standard. I made a little three inch splash here. Uh, we really didn't want to have any splash, but because it's a sink area, you're going to want to protect it. So I just made a little uh, three and a half inch curb there. It goes right underneath the window. You know, if you tile this wall or if you did this whole wall with slab, then it becomes, okay, where do you end the slab? Do you end it at the countertop? You know, do you end it at the wall? I kind of like how we did on the, the range wall because it's end to end. That makes a nice uh, finish. And I try not to design things that just end and just float off, you know. Another cool design feature of this kitchen is the toe cake lighting. And it's also under the, uh, the seating area for the island. It is a multicolor uh, light. So it's got this cool remote control and it has all the different colors on there. So you got obviously just on and off, right? But then you also have, like you can do red, you can do green, you can do, like we have teal set up in this kind of like bluish sky blue. Very cool feature to have. Uh, just, you know, another kind of bell and whistle. This, a uh, polished travertine floor is gorgeous. It goes throughout the entire downstairs of the house. We need to replace a big section of it in the kitchen. And instead of trying to redo the whole downstairs of the house, uh, cause you know, that would cost another 20 grand, 30 grand. We are like, let's save that money and just patch in uh, the floor. Um, 
And actually, this is a, a travertine called the uh, Encaro, Encara. Some import places call it a um, Turco Classico. Pretty consistent uh, travertine, or maybe the fact that it's so inconsistent. You can see like, you know, it's got darker pieces, lighter pieces, really dark pieces. So, you know, the fact that it's very inconsistent makes it easy to match, makes it look consistent. We were able to patch it all in, and then they brought their finisher back out and, uh, and polished the whole floor. So I'm not a huge fan of the collapsible walls. I do love the fact that the collapsible walls uh, give you a big opening, and I do love the fact that they give you a big window, you know, uh, so that the outside space and the inside space become, uh, kind of feel like the same space. I think this works just as well too. These are uh, really big, oversized French doors. Well, it's a double slider really, but I call it a French slider. I don't really know if that's the exact term or not, but it's a double slider. With the two inside panels open up, you've got, um, you're gonna have a nice clearance here. So if you had parties, I mean, this is about five feet opening right here. Now I know it's not as good as if you collapse the whole wall down. So maybe instead of five feet, you have eight feet. But I think what you sacrifice having the five foot opening, you gain screen doors in the middle here. So when this is open and you have the screens, now you don't have any bugs coming in. But you still get that nice wide opening. If you had a party, you could leave the screen doors open if you wanted to. Um, but if you're just chilling here at home and you just want the nice fresh air, you can have just the screens closed and the whole door open. Another cool part about these is that they are way less expensive than those collapsible walls. Normally those collapsible walls, they're normally, I, I roughly guesstimate, you know, when I give out uh, prices that they're about $1,200 a lineal foot, you know, so if you got like what we have here, I think this is a 12 or 14 foot opening, you know, you'd be at like uh, $20,000 for just the door, right? So this door is like six screen uh, and then insulation. So you're you're like a third the cost. So you save some money. It still brings in the outside space. You have screens on this, which you don't have on the other door. The only thing you're sacrificing is one panel uh, doesn't open. So instead of having three panels open, you have two panels that open. Across from the kitchen, we have our entertainment center area. This was originally, uh, I mean, still at the fireplace. We didn't touch the fireplace box, but we just changed everything else. This had some kind of a built-in dilly here. So, um, and it had a little raised platform and everything. We ripped all that out. Got this base cabinet, matches the kitchen perimeter black cabinets. We got the toffee shelf that matches the toffee accents in there. So this really ties the two spaces together. Uh, client painted the top of this wall matte black. She did a really good job. and. Um, then we got this uh, kind of metal-y looking uh, tile for the surround of the fireplace. Trimmed it out with a black shooter. As you can see, it turned out really cool. Oh, we also took the same tile that's on the base here, cut it into smaller pieces, and then did a herringbone pattern on the back side of this, uh, of this wall here as another little accent. All right, and that is the entire kitchen and entertainment center space. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you found some really great ideas for your own house. I was really happy to be a part of this uh, process with the client. Uh, she was really great to work with. I love her design concept, and I'm so glad that she uh, she had us bring it to life with her. Uh, it was a really great experience, and um, I'm really happy with the results. I know she is too. Hope you guys liked it, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.
like, uh, I'm not sure. Let me snip it off here. One, two. It's a big island. <laughs> and then we did some um, 12 inch cabins on the other side here. Uh, no, we didn't. We did 24 inch cabins on this side. Holy crap. Uh, or maybe a little bit less. They're not quite 24, they're probably 18. Extra, um, not extra, but that's, you know, lighting whip is a little uh, term for just the, uh, the uh, electrical uh, power cord, you know, raw wire. And then you, uh, this is ultra low uh, power, which is uh, different than your normal like lighting. Uh, if it's not, uh, you know, like recessed lights or running, you know, regular power like that, this is ultra low power. So it's a little bit different. Um, you still gotta be safe about it, but, um, but it's not as, uh, it's not as dangerous as running regular wire. Anyways, um, cut him you know, back. <laughs> copper hood. Um, not copper. Is it copper? Wait a minute. Bronze? This is, what's the metal I'm thinking? Uh, not copper. Copper is like a. Copper is like a. Uh, brass? Brass. That's it. I think I said brass hood before. It's not brass hood. I mean, copper hood. It is a brass hood. Let's open up these cabinets. What do you got in here? Oh, she's got some nice balls. Cool. Oh, it's a nice long organ, but it's so nice. Oh, that's nice. Um, and I think this is a pretty big one. I think this is an 1100 CFM. So this bad boy will, uh, you know, go skydiving. You know those little skydiving places? <laughs> uh, this window was, um, you know, had to be, kitchen sink was over in the kitchen originally. This is uh, was where the dining room was, so that I'll be moved over, drain line and everything on a rollout versus a uh, cup right there. This door needs to be adjusted. Yucky. That's a tube over there. Alright. And then slow auto flash flash. Oh lord. You can do that too. If you want to have a seizure. Anyways, where the heck were they going with this? Oh uh, yeah, we passed the floor. It was great. Moving on. <laughs> Very uh, again. Let me see. Let me. Uh, that's what I want to say. Hold on. Uh, 